a lot of rappers still it seems like want to be Tupac. They want to have his popularity. They want people to love them like they everyone loves him. But why do you think no one's succeeding? <laughs> well, because I, this is what they fail to realize about Tupac. In order for them to be Tupac, they would have to die before they peaked. Right before they peaked, they would have to die. So if you don't like, you don't die. You, you can't do it. Bottom line, if you don't go die. You're not gonna be the next two five, cause it ain't gonna be the next two five. Straight up. Three million dollars. One grab up front. That's it? Yeah. I know you heard the rumors. Death Row ain't a label. It's a way of life. You know, my whole thing when I talked to him, it wasn't about me saying like, you know, I feel bad she got shot. I was like, look, I got this bulletproof vest with this Death Row logo on the back coming to get at you. And you put that on and keep on smiling, keep on pushing and keep it against it, you know what I mean? Keep moving. And that was our relationship. Pac and my relationship was about some grown man Like, okay, people did this to you, people can do that to me, they can say this, they can say that. That's not gonna solve nothing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get you out of prison we're gonna go in and do you an incredible album. We're gonna make this money and we're gonna enjoy ourselves. Get your dollars. That's how it was about. When can we do this? When can you sign? She, show me the pen. This is my pen right here. We got a deal back. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. You know what tripped me out? I would love to have been a fly on the wall when Shug Knight sat down with Tupac for the first time in Clinton Correctional Facilities. I would have loved to hear the initial conversation. Yo, Pac, how you doing? <laughs> I would have loved to hear what Shug had to say. What was his introduction? Suge Knight, the CEO of Death Row Records, doesn't need an introduction. Tupac already knew who it was and what it was the moment Suge sat down. What was going through Pac's mind? Tupac was wrongfully accused of a crime that we all believe and know he didn't commit. He had his back against the wall, surrounded by enemies. In their territory, by the way, his home state. And you're trying to get out and your whole life is flashing before your eyes. And along comes a spotter, Marion Shug Knight. I know Pac was wondering what exactly could Shug offer him. But more importantly, could Shug actually deliver his offer of Tupac's freedom? That was crucial. That was probably the most important part of the business arrangement. Um, you hear in the All Eyes On Me documentary that Pac wanted a house for his mom. He wanted a million dollars per album. And it was a three album agreement between him and Shug Knight. I'm wondering, in Shug's mind, what would the duration of that agreement be? Like, did you have to stay on the label a certain amount of time? Was this a three album deal with the consideration that you'll be there for five years in principle or three years? Was that part negotiable? 
or did Tupac believe if I knock these three albums out in 10 months, as long as you got your three albums, my debt is paid and I'm able to continue on with my career as I see fit. The reason why that's important is because the things you hear now. There are people that say Pac wanted out of death row. There's people that say, nah, Tupac loved death row. He wanted to stay there the whole time. And then there's people like me to say, both equations can be right at the same time. Example, I loved high school. I went to Mervo here in Baltimore City. Loved Mervo, right? Had the most fun in my life. But I knew I couldn't stay there forever. I couldn't wait to get out that motherfucker. <laughs> I left early, actually. I dipped early. But I loved the school. I loved my homeboys. I, I loved everything about it. But I didn't want to stay there forever. And that's how I feel about Tupac and Death Row. I think Pac loved Death Row. No doubt about it. I think he loved Suge. I think he had love for Snoop. I think he loved Snoop. Let me fix that. He loved Snoop because when you love somebody and they let you down, that's what caused the anger. Because you really love this person, right? And they do something fucked up. That's where the hurt and the anger comes from. If you don't love somebody and they make you mad or fuck up, you don't give a damn. You ain't never liked that person to begin with, right? So the fact Pac was so angry at Snoop, there was a lot of love there. Trust me. He loved what Death Row was able to provide him. You know, an army of sorts. The machine behind him. When I say machine, there's no disrespect. I just mean something driving him, some force behind you. You know what I mean? Some oomph. Shouldn't provided that. Oh yeah, and some protection from his enemies. Let's not forget that. But with all the good things Death Row provided, we would be naive to not understand that Tupac was upset with the financial arrangement. Yeah, they put money in his pocket. Yeah, they gave him pretty things to drive and live in but he didn't own none of those, those things. So that was important. Don't tell me you spent a hundred grand of my money buying me a new car and that's where the money went. But when I look at the title, it's not my name. Cause then I don't own anything. There's no ownership on my behalf. And I think Tupac was smart enough to understand that. So if he did want out, I understand it. But I also know how these contracts work and you can have different entities at play at the same time. We know about Crest Rockets with Quincy Jones. We know about Tupac's own label out the gutter. We know about um, the idea of Machiavelli records. We know about some involvement from Death Row East on Tupac's behalf. And we also know about euthanasia. Pac wanted to be multifaceted in his career like he was in his art from poem writing to recording music 
to writing scripts for movies, to starring in movies. Pac wanted to do it all. How he was going to do it, we never got to see. You know Pac had an eye for talent. He wanted to sign groups. You know, he put a lot of people on in the music industry, gave a lot of people opportunities, made family members his personal assistants, part of his staff. Pac wanted to open up restaurants, have youth, sports teams, all types of stuff, man. The guy had it all mapped out. There were going to be a lot of moving parts and a lot of people involved in all the Tupac's ventures. The question is, would Death Row actually want to be a part and fund all of those things? Or did Tupac want to include Death Row in every single aspect of everything that he was doing? Maybe that's why he would need different imprints or entities to do these different ideas he had. That way, you ain't got to split the money every time. Or what you agreed upon with just one person. You feel me? You got to have a different arrangement with every other person you doing business with. Some people you would pay less, some people you would pay more, but it wouldn't be the same thing. You feel me? And let's keep it real. Would Shug really have been cool with Tupac doing business with, with all these other people? Let's keep it a buck. You got Shug willing to share like that? This video here was about the initial contract between Tupac and Death Row. It started with a conversation between Tupac and Shug Knight. Snoop Dogg took credit for that whole idea for these two superpowers coming together. Snoop said that was his idea. Don't really matter, but if he did, more props to him. Tell me what you guys think. How did Suge convince Tupac outside of dangling his freedom in front of him to come to death row when Tupac had already turned Suge Knight down on several occasions? Give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. Turn on the post notifications so you'll be the first ones to get it when I drop that shit. Anyway, it's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.